The Nigerian government says search and rescue operations are underway for 27 schoolboys and several staff kidnapped by gunmen from a boarding school on Wednesday. Witnesses say the gunmen who stormed the government science college in Kagara, Niger State, wore military uniforms and overwhelmed the school security. Officials say three staff and 12 members of their family were also abducted, while one student was killed while trying to escape. President Mohamed Dubuari has condemned the attack as senseless as parents plead for the safe return of their boys. We are appealing to the government to please rescue them. He will continue with his education despite the threat to them. I can assure you that when rescued, he will continue with his education. The government should help us with our families. Our hope lies with the government. Now, the attack on the government science college in Kagara is the latest in a series of school kidnappings in northern Nigeria. Let's take a look at other state-run schools that have been targeted in the past decade. In December, gunmen abducted more than 300 boys from a secondary boarding school in Kagara, Kankara, in northwest Nigeria. The boys were released a week later after negotiations between the federal government and the kidnappers who were never caught and only identified by officials as criminal gangs. In February 2018, suspected members of the armed group Boko Haram kidnapped 110 girls from a school in Dapchi in northeast Nigeria. And it took more than a month of negotiations to secure the release of 104 of the school children. Five others died during the kidnapping. One teenager was not released after refusing to give up her Christian religion. And in April 2014, Boko Haram stormed a boarding school in the nearby village of Chibok and kidnapped 276 girls. The incident sparked an international campaign with the hashtag Bring Back Our Girls. And more than 100 of them have since been released or escaped, but the whereabouts of the others is unknown. I spoke to Hassan Stan Labo, a retired colonel with the Nigerian army, and asked if the government is encouraging a lucrative ransom business by always negotiating with kidnappers and bandits instead of taking a tougher stance on violence. In the first place, I rule out anything combat rescue operations. So what we should be going for is search and see how some level of negotiated rescue can take place. If you release a single shot, those guys will respond. And if they get frustrated, they could begin to pick on the targets themselves to let you know how serious they are. They've got nothing to lose, mind you. We've got all to lose. Are you saying that the Nigerian government is between a rock and a hard place, such that it has to negotiate with criminals? Because past rescue operations have ultimately led to negotiations. And usually the criminals have either been offered amnesty or have never had to face the law. Is the Nigerian government encouraging criminality and a lucrative business by not taking a more decisive action in situations like this? And I mean, when I say decisive action, I do not necessarily mean fire for fire, but there's got to be something else to do. If there is anything else you ought to do, more so as a government, you ought to have done it in a preventive manner, preventive lines of actions that ought to have been taken to ensure that vulnerable targets, soft targets as this, are not infiltrated or accessed by bandits. More so when you know these targets, which of course the school falls within, is within bandit-dominated areas. Three local governments in Niger State are known to be fully dominated by bandits. Mila, Rafi, and Shiroro. Mm. So I expect a situation whereby the government, and I mean the local government on ground, the state government, and of course the federal government, should have been able to take, exercise some level of initiative in protecting schools. You see, this attack on schools is becoming now a recurring decimal with us in Nigeria. It was Chibok, mm -hmm. it became Kankara, mm -hmm. it is now Kagara. 
Yet lessons are never learned. President Buhari recently fired all the service chiefs he appointed in 2015 to help him fight terrorism and restore order in the north. With banditry still on the rise, as you have rightly noted in that region, will a change of guard make a difference? Because that's all everyone is asking for right now. A change of guard can only bring on board fresh hands, fresh brains, and maybe fresh ideas. A change of guard without a change in the operational environmental setting will not have any impact. A change of guard without you bringing in necessary equipment required to serve as the game changer does not bring about any change entirely at the end of the day. Well, let's talk about the children that are stuck in the middle of all of this. What will it take to end the school attacks that are becoming more frequent? And what does that mean for these children in the north of the country? Is this a hopeless situation? It is unfortunate, and I repeat, as a Nigerian, as a citizen, as a consigned citizen, it is unfortunate that we do not have in Nigeria governments or politicians that actually care about the social contracts they have with the people. Where is the safe school program that was discussed? You just take a look at the school where this incident happened. It looks like a refugee camp. It's not a school. And there is a government in that place. Nothing must be done about all this. Yeah. Are there security guarding these schools? No security? No accountability, nothing. And like we speak, at the end of the day, Josh, I can assure you, no head is going to roll after this. Hassan Stan Labo, a retired colonel with the Nigerian Army. That's Africa Matters. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.